This year's gathering of global financial leaders features a prominent place in the schedule for discussions about the implications of China's Belt and Road Initiative, or BRI. China's Vice Finance Minister, Shi Yaobin, says it's designed as a multilateral project. We hope and uh, we want to uh, make the whole, uh, uh, all of the countries uh, can be uh, share benefit. So from this point, uh, we can see, uh, you know, the BRA uh, uh, originated from China, but belongs to the world. In previous IMF World Bank gatherings, the two host institutions have endorsed the objectives of the Belt and Road Initiative, but during this forum, the World Bank president demonstrated strong support for its vision of encouraging open trade and development. I, I think two things that the world needs very much right now are strong leadership and an embrace of multilateral approaches to solving difficult problems. And the BRI is both of those things. The China-led Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank is financing many development projects along the route of the initiative. The bank's president says it provides a vast platform for countries to collaborate. Eurasia land geographically is the most massive continent. It's one piece. Economically, Eurasia is just so many broken pieces, never ever linked together or poorly assembled. So, along with spending totaling about 150 billion US dollars a year in 68 countries on infrastructure, including major transportation links and hubs, finance leaders here are calling on many of the recipient countries to enable those benefits to accrue by negotiating lower trade tariffs and improving the efficiency of borders to process goods. At a time when the Trump administration has been retreating from multilateralism, advocates of trade liberalization see an opportunity for the Belt and Road Initiative to play a major role in continuing the global development story. Daniel Wrenches, CGTN, Washington.